Bonjour, bienvenue à une conférence de presse Good day, welcome sur to a press conference with Mrs. Malmström on a proposal concerning students from outside the European Union. Before handing over the Commissioner to present the proposal adopted today, let me give the floor firstly to two uh, people who are already studying in the European Union, Mrs. Fatma Amedi from uh, Tunisia and Mr. Bellamy Muscatkabi from Benin, both of whom will begin by explaining their grounds for studying in the European Union and and then they will have an opportunity for questions and answers. So you have the floor. Bonjour. Good day. I imagine that you were expecting to hear the Commissioner Malmström first, but I'm afraid you have to make do with my colleague and me. To start with, we have come today to make an appeal to the European leaders. And vous through you, pas que deux we hope that uh, you will see not just the two people standing here on the podium, but thousands of students and researchers from the southern, from the south, who would like to come to the European Union to improve their know-how and knowledge, and who at times do suffer a lot of difficulties with the embassies and representations of the EU countries. So let me just introduce myself. Uh, I come from Bénin, which is a small country, as you know, in West Africa. I'm a researcher in political communication in the uh, University of de Bruxelles. And Depuis just que je suis en Belgique, uh, before uh, anything else, I just like to say that since I came to Belgium, I have been fortunate enough to meet very de vivre interesting de très belles people. I've had some very interesting experiences, which many um, others, I'm sure, would like to experience as well. Donc de ne um, pas but which vivre cette richesse they can't que je vis, moi, benefit actuellement. from these same advantages. Why, why not? Well, let me give you an example. Very, uh, one of the many examples, a few years ago, we were in the Association of Bourse de la Francophonie, a bursary from uh, the master University of Francophonie for, uh, to complete a master's in Egypt and Alexandria. We were required to uh, follow a practical training course. course. Uh, I chose uh, Belgium. Uh, there were five of us all together. And of the five who opted for Belgium, only three got the visa. I just didn't understand why. We have the same bursary, the same uh, period, same duration of the training course, three months, same financial et on donne uh, le visa à trois uh, personnes et on ne uh, donne pas le visa à deux personnes. L'autre problème, uh, c'est la durée d'obtention du visa. Of, on était donc cinq of five of à avoir déposé nos, notre demande de visa à, à, à l'ambassade de la Belgique au Caire to the uh, au mois de février. Jusqu'au mois de mai, nous n'avions pas encore reçu notre visa. Uh, c'est pendant ce temps la soixantaine qui devrait se déplacer pour faire un stage. Uh, we had uh, avoir le visa uh, those who were going to France semaines. were able to obtain their visas within two weeks. So as I understand it, each de country sa, does de its own thing, has its own rules and its own procedures. There's no coordination, coordination apparently between the European countries at a time when we would like to create a genuine union between the countries of the European Union. Secondly, many people were supposed to be going to Luxembourg as part of this training course, and they were asked for a work permit. En Égypte. So you have somebody rien who's Luxembourg. living in Egypt, il veut aller faire son stage in Egypt, knows Luxembourg, nothing about Luxembourg, wants to do their training course in Luxembourg, and they're told they have to provide a work permit. How, by what magic trick, can you get a visa for Egypt? Well, there are many difficulties today, given that they're not living yet. Well, there are many difficulties today, given that they're not living yet. Well, there are many difficulties today, given that they're not living yet. Well, there are many difficulties today, given that they're not living yet. Well, there are many difficulties today, given that they're not living yet. Well, there are many difficulties today, given that they're not living yet. Well, there are many difficulties today, given that they're not living yet. Well, there are many difficulties today, given that they're not living yet. Well, there are many difficulties today, given that they're not living yet. Well, there are many difficulties today, given that they're not living yet. Well, there are many difficulties today, given that they're that's why we would like to give our support to the Commissioner and all the, the goodwill uh, in the European Union, including journalists, uh, 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 examples to, to try to uh, uh, do something uh, about this, to try to make uh, some sort of progress in, in this uh, Bonjour à tous. Matter. Good day, everyone. Firstly, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Fatma Abidji. I come from Cassis, 
Uh, Tunisia, I hold uh, agro-food agro food engineering de diploma. Obtained uh, from the suite, uh, Agriculture Engineering Balance, Institute uh, in Tunis. Uh, I then studied in uh, Valencia, in a, uh, uh, did a, a training course uh, with a major company. I wanted to continue my studies in Europe. I took part in the Erasmus uh, Mundus uh, program, and I was able to obtain a research master's project with a microbiology. Uh, uh, research Institute occasion, with uh, Professor Sigrid Flower, uh, and I would just like to et, uh, thank uh, the team responsible for Erasmus Mundus and those uh, who work specifically on international uh, relations. I'd like to thank them for all their support uh, during, uh, to me, during my stay in Brussels. Une, une uh, study uh, stay abroad is a wonderful uh, opportunity. In personal terms and in academic terms, I was able to develop a lot of skills and know-how and technical fields and uh, in, uh, pu, uh, in uh, analysis and other skills. I was able to acquire new skills, which uh, I hadn't been able to acquire in my country of origin, uh, of course. These uh, programs attract many students, but uh, nonetheless uh, there are some very serious restrictions and constraints which deter, in fact, quite a few uh, students. Mon would be uh, trainees, as my colleague has just said, visa issuance is uh, becoming increasingly difficult. If you look at uh, the requirements in terms of guarantors abroad, or means of subsistence, which are very difficult, to, uh, very difficult to paperwork to provide, just uh, uh, as part of uh, for the purposes of doing a training course as part of our university studies, I was able to uh, take advantage of my Schengen visa to visit uh, Europe and visit uh, various uh, uh, institutes to, to try to develop a partnership uh, with either side involving either side uh, of the Mediterranean. I'm working with uh, in uh, cooperation between the University of Carthage and Tunisia and the Université Libre de Bruxelles to try to strengthen the links and synergy between these two universities in agro-food agro uh, with the uh, Technopole of Isar in uh, Tunisia. Uh, among others, the purpose of my project will be to develop a Tunisian agricultural product and develop a market for it with the support of the European, European institutes and, and uh, in the agri-food sector. But uh, having completed my project, the possibility then of uh, continuing to work in Europe, uh, I have to, to uh, sign a, a, a declaration on, uh, of honor to the effect that after my completing my studies, I will return to my country of origin. So during this these four years, completing my thesis, uh, uh, we students uh, and, and researchers should at the same time need to have, a, 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 to be, have our families with us and to have the possibility of family reunion during this uh, period. So I think it is uh, very important to pass on this message. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to answer questions uh, afterwards. But now we will hand over to Commissioner Malmström. Thank you very much to our two uh, opening speakers. Thank you very much for sharing your experiences with us and telling us about your experiences here in Brussels. The contribution you've heard today is a very valuable illustration. Uh, to, to show the situation of many students and many researchers who do come to Europe with their talent to enrich our universities and research centers. Just as they, every year a wide number of EU non-EU national comes to Europe, students, researchers and other categories of young people. Around 220,000 came in 2011 for the purposes of student pupil exchange, uh, and remunerated training or voluntary service. The highest numbers were registered in France, Spain, Italy, and Germany. Unfortunately, this risked to become a lose-lose situation because there are so many hurdles that these people face. The students or the researchers, they risk to miss out important uh, professional career opportunities, and the EU's economy risks being deprived of new talents, skills, and ideas. Now, one might ask yourself, why do we need these people now when we have such high unemployment and difficulties for all the young, very well-talented and educated people in Europe? 
Well, we do need all these people as well, of course, uh, but we also need uh, for the future and for today to have skilled people coming to the EU's economy. Because even there is high unemployment today, we are facing lack of skills in key areas in Europe, and these people will be key for us to, to continue to develop uh, and, and grow. And also with the, the future demographic evaluation, um, the development in mind, we also need these people. And we need to attract the workforce that we need. Countries such as Brazil, China and India are destinations where many highly educated people like engineers, doctors, nurses look for tomorrow's opportunities and research possibilities. And we also know that the US, Australia and Japan have much better incentives to attract these people and to convince talents to join their job market, in turn benefiting from the knowledges and skills. So it is in our own interest to make sure that we have an excellence to increase our appeal to foreign students and researchers. I have therefore the pleasure today to share with you two proposals uh, for directive which aims at introducing better conditions uh, of entry for foreign students, researchers and other groups. The proposal do not come from scratch. The proposal will uh, modify and merge two existing directives, one on students, school pupils, uh, volunteers and unremunerated trainees, and the other one on researchers. As you heard from the, uh, our two students here, we have quite a few hurdles today. Non-EU nationals who fulfil the conditions of their directive may still not be able to come uh, to the EU because they might be refused an entry visa. Or a non-EU national have succeeded in applying for an Erasmus Mundus scholarship but again refused entry visa because of immigration rules. Today the current rules are not limited. Member states can take unlimited time to, uh, to uh, take a decision on an application and this leaves of course the applicants in a very difficult situation. Also, moving from one member state to another can be difficult or sometimes even impossible for the students and researchers, and that has a negative impact on the transfer of skills and knowledge between the EU countries. The existing students' directive requires non-EU national students to leave the EU immediately after finalisation of their studies, so member states cannot reap the benefits of the knowledge and skills these students and researchers have required. In an absence of a clear legal framework, there is a risk of exploitation to which trainees and au pairs are particularly exposed. So what will change then? Well, the proposal will improve the conditions of admission in order to make sure to avoid situations where people fulfil the conditions for a permit but not the conditions for a visa and therefore cannot enter. There will be a 60-day limit uh, introduced for Member States' authorities to decide on an application. Increased EU intramobility will be ensured. There will be simpler and more flexible rules for researchers, students and remunerated trainees to move within the EU to carry out studies and research. For researchers, this will also mean giving certain mobility rights to their family members. This will allow for an easier transfer of skills and knowledge and will render the EU more attractive as a destination for talent from abroad. We will also improve access to the labour market. During their studies, the students and researchers will be allowed to work at least 20 hours per week so that they can support themselves and contribute economically. Researchers and students will also have the possibility to remain under certain conditions for a period of 12 months on the territory after finalisation of their studies and research to identify job opportunities or set up a business. This is not an automatic right to work as granting work permit remains a national responsibility. The proposal will also guarantee the overall protection of additional groups of EU nationals, such as au pairs and trainees, who are not covered by the existing EU legislation, and they also face similar problems and take part in similar exchanges. So, in sum, these rules, we hope, can improve and make Europe a more attractive destination so that we can attract young, talented people from third countries, stimulating research, development and innovative performance. The uh, new proposal will also make sure that these forms of temporary migration are beneficial for the sending and the receiving countries. It will allow non-EU nationals to acquire skills and knowledge and contribute to Europe's competitiveness. And in addition, this training period in Europe will encourage the inflow and outflow of talented individuals and support cooperation with third countries. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. Are there any questions to the Commissioner? 
we can start here, ladies first. Hi, um, I'm Teddy Nykel from Reuters, um, and actually I'm a trainee from the United States, and I and a lot of people I know haven't had any problems coming to Europe and traveling throughout it or getting visas. So I'm wondering, is there are there specific areas of the world, for example, Africa, where it's harder and takes longer for visas, um, or is it kind of a general? Is are there certain places where it's um, harder for students to come to Europe? Is my basic question. Well, we don't have the full uh, picture of that because we haven't done the, the investigation on an ethnic or national basis. Of course, they are true that there are lots of people who come to Europe without any problems, and that's excellent. But there are, however, as uh, our two witnesses have, have shown today, a lot of people. And I have met so many students from different countries, not only Africa, but also Asia, countries of Europe, outside the European Union, and occasional Americans as well, who have been complaining that they've been waiting so long to get the visa or the permit, even if all the other papers and so on uh, were there. So, so we don't see a specific uh, picture there, but in general there are, there are difficulties uh, and some countries in the EU, EU member states are more slow than others. Thank you. Uh, two questions, uh, Commissioner. The first one, when do you expect member states to approve this proposal and when do you expect the proposal to be entered in force? And the second, uh, does your proposal concern also the researchers from the potential candidate countries like uh, the Balkan countries? Thank you very much. First of all, these proposals concern everybody who is not an EU national, so all third countries without any classification. Secondly, we will now submit it, of course, to the ministers and to the European Parliament. Um, it is very difficult to estimate how long it will take for them to, uh, uh, to, to do the, the co-legislative work. Uh, of course, hopefully it will not take too much time, but, but I, I can't really estimate. They have been waiting for this, and it's not a surprise that it comes. Already a couple of, it was identified in the Stockholm program that we would do the revision uh, of, of these rules. Uh, but how long it takes is very difficult to estimate. Yes, please. Thank you. It's Tomasz Neid from Brooks Info Hungary. Two practical questions. The first is that uh, do you expect that uh, the number of uh, the foreign students and researchers will significantly increase as a consequence of uh, this proposal? And the other one is which are the main sending countries? So which are the countries who are interested in this facilitation the more? Thank you. Looking at my collaborators, whether we have more statistics in the background material mm -hmm. so that we can provide, yes. We have in here all the statistics and so on, so you can have a look at that, because I don't have the figures in, in my head. Um, well, we do expect uh, the numbers to raise, but it's very difficult to know, of course, how much, um, because this is long-term term perspectives as well. Facilitate for those who are already here, and also for those who, who may come. We can see that in some countries has gone down uh, quite considerably, and we hope that these improvements, once the new rules are in place, will lead to a facilitation of, uh, of these talented people to come to you. Merci. Y a -il pour la Any other questions? questions for the Commissioner? Okay, thank you very much. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you.